So I made the mistake of opening my mouth on social media, claiming that Lightburn was a thousand times or more faster than LaserWeb. Um, someone called me out on this and asked me to uh, share my testing methodology, how I was doing the timings and so on. Um, so I figured I would uh, dig in a little bit and uh, record a video demonstration so that uh, you don't think that I'm lying or trying to make this up. Um, so I've got a bunch of test files that were sent to me by various users um, toward the beginning of the lifetime of Lightburn. Um, LaserWeb was still in fairly heavy use by a lot of people who had G-code based machines. Um, and so I was receiving files from users as a way of testing um, to make sure that Lightburn handled the things that they were using. So um, a couple of examples in this file. Um, these are from a collection of vector art. Um, you'll notice that they're taking a few seconds each to load. Um, that one was relatively quick. Um, let me remove these and I'll do that third one again. So that by itself took maybe a second, not too bad. Um, some files don't work at all. Um, LaserWeb appears to require R12 ASCII format. Um, it also doesn't seem to like things that have splines in them. Um, so for example, this file doesn't display at all. Um, there are a couple of other files that I've got here, like this one, this skull, just doesn't display at all. Um, but for the most part, these work. Um, there are some here that have some problems. So this file, for example, um, has these uh, points trailing off toward the origin. You'll see that it, this looks like a little X here and then this line goes off toward the origin. Um, and we'll do that one again just to see how long this takes. So this is the box. It was that long. Now if I flip over to Lightburn and I import the same file, uh, Damien box, Lightburn reports that it took 48 milliseconds, and you'll notice that there are no little strays, and these are actually squares. Um, if you go back to LaserWeb, those little squares are X's, and there are lines trailing off to the origin. So this is fairly clearly a bug in the handling of DXFs in LaserWeb. Um, back over to Lightburn, if I bring in uh, this file that failed to load in LaserWeb, Lightburn handles it just fine. Um, this dolphin file that didn't show up in LaserWeb, Lightburn handles it just fine. It's relatively complicated. It took 200 milliseconds to import. Um, SVG files are the ones that I primarily use because they contain splines um, and they contain splines in a form that Lightburn likes and that most uh, 2D graphics software works with. They're called Beziers. Um, so if I, in here, in LaserWeb, import the Grinch, it took that long. If I go to Lightburn and import the Grinch, that's one millisecond. Um, and if I flip the display over to Smooth Filled, you can see that um, visually it's correct. Um, I'm going to do uh, Tweety one millisecond, and this transformer image, also one millisecond. Um, again, the display style has no impact on the importing time, so if I bring in all three of those at the same time now, um, there they are. Uh, I should be able to grab one of these and drag it out of the way, so you can see. If I go back to LaserWeb, let me put this back, um, so the Grinch took that long. Tweety took that long. And this transformer image, which is quite simple, takes that long. And now that's not horrible, it's not super slow, but Given that that takes approximately a second, maybe two seconds, and Lightburn imports that in quite literally a millisecond, that is more than a thousand times faster. That's 
the thousand times that I'm referring to. So one millisecond to import that one, one millisecond to import that one, one millisecond to import that one. Um, there's your thousand or more. Now, not everything loads that slowly into LaserWeb. Um, as an example, this world map loads fairly quickly. Um, I don't know exactly what's unique about this file. It may be that the paths are all linear segments instead of uh, splines. It may be that LaserWeb doesn't like the splines. That's my best guess. Um, that same file in Lightburn imports in six milliseconds, so it's not exactly an outlier. Um, that's just importing files. When you get into things like path planning, um, then it gets more interesting. So if I bring this file in, this is one that actually impressed me in LaserWeb. So if I open this file, this is 12 megs. It takes about six seconds, which is pretty good. Um, Lightburn imports that same file in 350 milliseconds, which is better. Um, but that's still a good, a good result for LaserWeb. So if I take this and I tell LaserWeb that I want to uh, make this into a path, let me grab this file, bring it down here. So I'm just going to do a straight laser cut. Um, I don't have anything special specified in here. Um, it's just going to do a straight cut generation of this file. Um, if I say go, it's doing its thing it's going to produce g-code for this file. So now you can see that this is going to take some time. We are at 5% and it appears to actually be slowing down. 6%, um, maybe not slowing down. Six and a half, seven. Okay, so that's gonna be a while. So while that's going, I'm going to flip over and put Lightburn into the same mode um, so I don't have anything special set here. Um, by default, Lightburn will cut inner to outer shapes. Um, so if I look at my optimization settings, um, I've got it set to cut inner shapes first, reduce travel moves, reduce direction changes. So it's uh, actually, let me turn that one off. Um, so this is pretty basic settings. If I say, uh, let me flip over to a Gerbil device, flip the image back so that it is correct. Um, so I'm going to say, save the G code for this. In the time that it takes between when I click this button and it tells me that uh, my cut is out of bounds. Oh, there it goes. Um, so if I say continue, yes. Uh, oh, okay, let me try this again. So we're at 14% here. Um, with Lightburn, if I tell it to path plan this, now I've got this thing well outside the bounds of my job. Um, so it's going to do a bunch of work and then warn me that it's going to be out of bounds. Um, I can bypass that by just telling it to produce me a preview. Um, so that's how long it took to do the path plan for this. And you can see that um, it's running all the way around, cuts inside two outside shapes, um, it's going to do the outer ring last or outer rings last. Now, this is with the most relatively simple um, optimization settings. If I tell it that I want to cut from top, for example, um, and rerun the preview, it's recomputing. So now you'll notice that the path plan is from top to bottom. Um, this is a fairly complicated file but it's not outlandish in terms of what people do with Lightburn. If I say, save this G-code, 
Um, it is regenerating the path plan. It's going to tell me that it might be out of bounds. I say yes. It's now giving me the option to save. The G code is generated and buffered in memory. All it's doing now is going to put it to a file. Um, if we go back to LaserWeb, LaserWeb is now at 20%, not quite. So in the amount of time that it took me to generate multiple path plans in Lightburn, um, including loading the file, uh, scrubbing through the preview, and so on and so on, we've, we, we are one-fifth of the way through that file in LaserWeb. So this is an order of magnitude. This is a thousand times. Like, it's, it's dramatic. Um, so that's where my numbers are based.